All right, welcome back everybody. Government and the SABC say it's all systems go for the implementation of digital migration. The rollout of decoders needed to receive the digital signal and is scheduled to start next month. The migration deadline, well, this is the international migration deadline, is set for June the 17th. Now, it's not necessarily going to be met here in South Africa. Uh, it's said to take another three or so years for absolute complete migration. And as we go through this process, South Africans are urged to pay their TV licenses. We are joined now in studio by our own SABC COO, Claudie Motswaneng. And uh, with him, we've got Lynn Mansfield, who is the SABC DTT advisor. Uh, thank you very, very much for being with us here on the program. It's good mm -hmm. to have both of you. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. All right. Before we get into the technicalities of everything, um, Claudie, I imagine uh, you're also just as shocked as all of us were watching last night what was happening to uh, our crew members out here, just around the corner uh, by the Mill Park Clinic. Uh, we are all shocked, uh, but I think what is important for SABC and our colleagues is no one was injured. Yeah. We are very glad that uh, there was no one who was injured, and we will always support our colleagues. Yeah. But you know, crime is all over uh, around the world. It's not just South Africa, but really it is bad that people can just go. I mean, when people are doing their work and try to rob them. But we are happy that they are still alive and uh, we will always support them. Yeah, they certainly are. And uh, we have been told, uh, I spoke to our, our head of television news, Natanda Moseko. She said that we will be providing counselling for them as well if they do need it. Uh, because these, you know, these, these acts, they traumatise people. They really do. And uh, the reality is we're doing our job and it's not going to stop us. Yeah, I, I think it is very important to give them uh, counselling. Yeah. And we have a team at the SABC OD who's looking after such issues. I think they will move with speed to talk to our colleagues. Absolutely. Thanks very much, Tladi, for addressing that for us. Now, let's talk about these, these issues around digital migration and uh, where the SAB stands at all of this. I mean, it is important for us to, to begin by explaining that both the SABC and government, specifically Cabinet, have always been pro-unconditional access. Um, unconditional access, what does this mean? Because that's what I, I think everybody is a little bit scared of, that suddenly, uh, come digital migration, we're going to have a test pattern, and that's it. But that's not the case. Cloudy, unconditional access, what does this mean? SABC, we are very glad. We have been advocating to the policy makers to say to them, as SABC, we are a public broadcaster. We don't need conditional access. We don't need encryption because SABC should be available to all citizens of South Africa. And we are glad that really this is what the Department of Communication has done to say those who want encryption or conditional access, they should pay for themselves. Those who don't want, like us, as free to air, we should be able to do our work as we are doing now. And SABC, it is very important because conditional access or encryption, it is too expensive for our own citizens. You know, because you pay royalties, maintenance, and so on and so on. What we have been advocating is just a simple standard box yeah. where our own people, our gogos uh, in rural areas, they won't be able to, to struggle. I think it is a good move for our own people in this country, especially government. They have done very well. Yeah. All right. Now, let's talk about digital migration. We had a fabulous interview with Sonny McQuetla last week, who honestly spoke to me and hence our viewers like we were five-year-olds learning. And, 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 and we needed that to understand what digital migration was all about, what it entailed. And I think he gave us a great understanding. But uh, Lynn, this is your job. You're the man that's, that's running this here at the SABC for us. Um, for those of us that are not technical, how is it going to work when, when finally this, this is implemented? Uh, I think what is important is that there's a huge investment in television sets in the country, uh, something about 12 million TV households, many of them having more, multiple television sets. Now, one has to protect that investment in the consumer. And when the uh, DSTV was launched, um, people bought a decoder, they retained their old television set. So a similar thing will happen with DTT. We're also looking at the natural progression of where things are going. And the set-top box is an interim measure, purely to secure the investment on the consumer so they can retain their television set. 
later on when they replaced that television set, the IDTV, the, the smart TVs that you can get uh, in store at the moment, yeah. they will log onto the network without an additional set of box. Yeah. Now, as soon as you have encryption, it complicates that progression. So what we've advocated is that basically we do not support conditional access. The SABC has always been free to air. It will remain free to air. There will be no mechanism that we can switch viewers off or no one else can switch viewers off. Okay. It is a common platform used by multiple broadcasters. You're no longer on your own individual network. Yeah. So it is in incredibly important that no one can sabotage the network. Um, so that is basically what we've advocated. And it will, the natural progression to IDTVs will just happen automatically. Yeah. When people find they want to replace their, te <coughs> their television set, they can do so with an IDTV. Or it's going to become very difficult to purchase um, the old uh, cathode ray tube television sets. Yeah. In most stores, flat screen TVs are the norm. Yeah, indeed. Um, indeed so are. I think it's, you know, that was part of our thinking. Okay. So... As usual, SABC, we talk about free to air. The only thing you need to do is just pay your TV licenses. I mean, that is, <laughs> that's what you do to get these channels. And the benefit, because I think viewers need to know the benefit, is that in time, the SABC will have more channels because that's what this digital platform will allow for. I, I think what is important is uh, our own people to pay TV license and understand that uh, when they pay TV license, they're paying for local content. Uh, there is an issue about uh, uh, TV license money paying employees of the organization, which is not true. We are using other means to pay our own colleagues. So it is not true that the TV license pays uh, our own employees. What is important is when you pay TV license, we use that money for local content. We use that money to improve the tools of the SABC, the facilities that you see here, the studios and so on. That is the money that we use most to improve our own facilities and tools and also improve our own local content. You remember that, uh, Lian, we went around all provinces, nine provinces, to encourage people to produce local content in their own language in those different uh, 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 provinces. Verona from television and Leslie Talk from radio, they went all out to make sure that there is RFP book so that people can produce local content. But we have challenges because they are not, we don't have many people who are producing local content. They are not used to television. They are used to radio. Yeah. In radio, we don't have problems because most of the dramas, the soapies mm -hmm. are local <coughs> content, most of those uh, dramas, because we want to make sure that uh, uh, we put local because we believe local is lager. Rather than to put all those soapies from abroad, we want our own people to produce local content. When they pay TV license, they are assisting SABC to make sure that we are able. Because we need to pay those production houses. We need to pay those actors also. It is important that people pay TV license, uh, 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 including the members of those portfolio committees in parliament. Yeah, indeed. Um, in terms of um, the switching over, how ready is the SABC? Are we ready to go ahead and do it tomorrow? I think as we sit here today, the SABC programs are being broadcast on the DTT network okay. countrywide. Um, we have presently four channels. The fifth one uh, will come along. So basically right now we are broadcasting. There are just no set of boxes for people to receive it. People with IDTVs out there <coughs> are already receiving our digital channels. Yeah. So, so when government gives the go-ahead, whenever that may be, I mean, we've, we know that the international deadline is the 17th of June. Uh, we've heard that we may not meet that deadline. But the reality is, is that us, as the SABC, we're all for this, and we can go ahead. The reality is we are waiting the advice from government okay. and the announcement of the date. As Elaine is saying, SABC, we are ready now. We are ready yesterday. Okay. Tell me, <clears throat> why are other broadcasters against this? We're very much so for this, and particularly when it comes to the unconditional access. But there are a lot of um, other channels, and particularly your pay for channels, that are not, not for this. Why? What, what, what does it do for them? I think it is important to explain, especially uh, the channel that is sitting on the multi choice bouquet, uh, the news channel. That channel, it is an SABC channel. Uh, when we, 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 we switch on for, we migrate to DTT, that channel will migrate to our own platforms. It is an SABC channel. It is sitting there as a pilot 
project. Yeah. So it is an, an SABC channel. And people should also remember that we engage multi-choice because there's this regulations, must carry regulations, where all content of the SABC, it should be carried by pay TV because government want to uh, access all uh, uh, citizen in different platforms, including your pay TV. That is the reason why you have the must carry regulations where uh, when our content sit there, we are not uh, getting paid from those uh, uh, pay TVs. But we have been engaging uh, multi-choice to say to them, no, look, you benefit because of the SABC. And when you look the channels, the most watched channels in the multi-choice bouquet, it's SABC channels. We said put money in the SABC because you are also benefiting from SABC. That is the reason why they are investing in the SABC. All right, let's leave it there. Hope that's given you a good um, explanation and uh, seeing where the SAB stands on this whole DTT issue. We're ready. We can go whenever the government tells us to switch over onto this. But certainly it's a rollout of those set-top boxes that will change the signal from analog to digital that is needed in order for that change to happen so that we can continue to broadcast here on these TV bouquets. Uh, Lynn Mansfield, thank you very much for talking yes, to us here. And, of course, um, Claudia Motswaneng, who is the CEO... COO of the SABC, Maybe thank you. Before. Please, be, before, be, be, before you closed, it is important for people to understand the benefits of DTT. Yeah. It's all our radio stations. They will be everywhere. If you are listening to Umshobo Wenene, you will be able to listen to Umshobo Wenene everywhere. All Amazing. our radio stations. All our television, like now, some of the television, the you can't watch uh, uh, yeah. uh, SABC3 in some of the provinces or some of the areas. You'll be able to watch such uh, uh, television. Yeah. All the platform of the SABC, they will be everywhere, including those 19 so radio stations. So every single one of our radio stations will be available countrywide. Whichever radio station, if it was more, a regional station will now be nationwide. Yes, when you go to Cape over. Town, when you go everywhere, you want to listen to your own radio station, yeah, you'll you be able to there. listen your, to That's your own radio station. Well, you've taught me something. I didn't know that about DTT as well. You learn something every day about this DTT. That's great. Thank you for letting us know that. That's a really great advantage for everyone. You're so used to listening to some of your radio stations and your favorite stations wherever you are in the country. You feel a bit lost, don't you, sometimes? But uh, now, with the switchover, you'll be able to listen wherever you are around the country. So we'll just wait for that date, and we'll go ahead and do that. All right, we're a bit late. It's just.